What's up, fight fans? Welcome to Sports Kita MMA's Daily News Roundup for March 1st. The co-main event for UFC 272 has run into a slight change of plans. Rafael Fiziev has tested positive for COVID-19 and has dropped out of his fight with Rafael Dos Anjos. Fiziev has since released a statement on Twitter that reads, I'm devastated to announce that I'm out of the fight. I had a great camp and was ready to put on the show. I flew all the way to Vegas from Thailand just to get sick with COVID. For three days I'm in hotel bed with fever, bones pain and cough. Fiziev then continued, I called out RDA and I still want that fight when my health will allow me to compete again. Apologies to him, but saying that I was faking it is complete nonsense. Time will put everything in place. But now there seems to be a line at the door for potential replacements, one of those being none other than Islam Mahachev. After dismantling Bobby Green last Saturday, Mahachev wants to make an even bigger statement to MMA fans who were doubting his title shot deservedness. Mahachev volunteered to take the short notice fight in a tweet that said, 170? Let's do it. We have unfinished business, RDA. It only took Dos Anjos an hour to respond to Mahachev in a tweet that said, 165 pounds. Division your guy created. I'm game. The back and forth continued when Islam threw shade at RDA. You looking for a way out again? And Dos Anjos finally sealed the deal with this. 170 pounds, I'm in. Let's go. Don't run. So it seems like our co-main event might be saved and taking place at welterweight. Now we wait for the word of the UFC. Now that the two have verbally agreed, does Islam Mahachev do to Rafael Dos Anjos what he did to Bobby Green less than a week ago? Colby Covington has now made his prediction about how his fight against Jorge Masvidal would go. Just recently, Masvidal predicted that the headline after UFC 272 would read, Colby in critical condition, might not fully make it, and Covington offered an alternative. In an interview with TMZ Sports, Covington had this to say about the fight. I see a lot of pain. I'm gonna inflict so much pain on Jorge Masvidal. He's not gonna be the same person ever again. He keeps talking about a baptism. There's not gonna be a baptism. It's going to be a funeral. It's Jorge Masvidal's career-ending funeral. It's gonna be violent. And I'm not gonna finish it quick. I could easily finish it quick because I do it all the time behind closed doors when we used to train together. But this one, I'm gonna drag it out. I'm gonna make him suffer. And it'll probably be the first time in UFC history you see a guy in a main event just verbally tap out and say he can't take no more of a beating. Covington went on to say on episode 1 of UFC Embedded that Masvidal only has 7 days to live and that he should enjoy them while he could. Is Covington vs Masvidal one of the biggest rivalries the UFC has ever seen? Israel Adesanya is finally giving the fans what they want by beginning to plant the seeds of hype for a potential matchup with Hamzat Chimaev. The UFC middleweight champion just came off a title defense victory against Robert Whittaker at UFC 271 and plans to meet Jared Cannonier this year, but has finally opened up the can of worms with Chemayev on the True Jordy podcast. Adesanya had this to say, I wanted to fight this guy when he was this Adonis and put him on a pedestal. Like listen, I want to fight this guy, I want to f I feel like that's the same thing with Chemayev right now. Everyone's doing the same thing and riding off that energy. I like when people wake that side of me up. It's in there. I know it's in there, my dark side. I just don't tap into it because I can't live in that place for too long. Adesanya will have to wait for Chimaev to dispose of the welterweight division first, especially now that Burns vs Chimaev is confirmed for April 9th at UFC 273. Many predict that because Adesanya had troubles against former light heavyweight champ Jan Bohovic, that he would suffer a more troubling fate against Hamzat's elite level wrestling. How long do you think it will take for Hamzat Chimaev to get a chance at welterweight gold? Do you think the UFC will allow him an immediate shot at Adesanya if he wins? Jan Bohovic recently blasted Sean Strickland on Twitter over Strickland's comments on the Russia-Ukraine war. Strickland had this to say, Ukraine should just bend the knee and become Russian. I understand it sucks and yes you could win, but do you really want to be the new Afghanistan for the next 30 years? Not saying it's right, but this hard pill to swallow will be better in the end. Bohovic, whose home country of Poland neighbors Ukraine and is housing many of their refugees, offered his wisdom to Strickland. On Twitter, Bohovic had this to say, Would you? It is easy to give away someone else's independence. The history of the Eastern European region is full of struggle and suffering. Ukraine, as a country and as a people, has endured much. Their resistance is understandable and admirable. Freedom. While Strickland continues to speak his mind and be the psychopath that everyone loves to hate, Bohovic comes to the rescue and offers up his legendary Polish wisdom, as well as a brief history lesson. Do you think Sean Strickland is just trolling MMA fans with his comments, or is this his genuine personality? And last but not least, Dan Hooker recently gave his thoughts on a potential matchup with Islam Mahachev and Justin Gaethje. In a recent conversation with the All-Star, Hooker had this to say, Gaethje is managed by Ali. That's not a good fight for him. 
I can't see Ali pushing that fight. Gaethje's a pretty big money spinner for him as well. Not saying he would lose or anything like that. I'm just saying like stylistically it's not a great fight. Like a guy that likes to go out there and put on an absolute show is not the best that we've seen stylistic matchup for Islam. Hooker is speaking on the fact that both Gaethje and Mahachev are managed by Ali Abdelaziz and thinks that Ali would rather push a Mahachev versus Oliveira matchup instead. Hooker is also speaking from experience, as Mahachev barely left him with his arm intact at UFC 267 and sent him packing back to the featherweight division. Now Hooker looks to get back into the win column over budding featherweight prospect Arnold Allen at UFC London on March 19th. That about does it for Sports Kita MMA's most exciting news from the MMA world. Here is one final question for you fight fans. Was Dan Hooker's move back down to featherweight a smart career decision? Given the names in the top 10, how do you see Hooker's chances at making a push for featherweight gold? Don't forget to subscribe and follow Sports Kita MMA on all our social media platforms. I'm Alex, and as always, thanks for tuning in.